hi, welcome to a dead channel which never posts any videos and all. Uh, so, today we've got a big bag of trash picks. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what we've got in here, but let's dig in right away. So, that's one nasty ass keyboard. It goes away. That's another nasty ass keyboard. It goes away. Here we've got a Fujitsu laptop, Windows 7, so not entirely ancient, but still probably not very new. Another one just like it. And these Fujitsu chargers to go with a laptop, that's good. Are these docking stations to go on. So we've got Ethernet, a couple of USBs, DVI, display port, more USBs. Not very impressive. Not very impressive at all. Oh, parallel port. So these are probably not very modern at all. Uh, that belongs to the disgusting keyboard. What's that? 48 volt DC adapter. Well, that's an oddity. 48 volts. Let's throw that in there. Pile, another laptop adapter. The stuff is wet. And nasty ass mouse which has batteries in it. Rechargeable. Probably not doing for a kick mouse device. Bunch of receivers for the mice. Two receivers. We have just three mice with two receivers. Okay, well, let's see if any of this stuff works. So the input devices are all nasty and disgusting, and I'm going to just throw those away. Uh, these laptops seem to be relatively fresh. Perhaps the input devices have belonged to these laptops and as such they've never really been used much uh, with the internal devices because they really do look as if they've for the most part just been sitting around. So this is a Fujitsu Lifebook S series. We've got an i3 sticker, Windows 7 and it is a model S710, no battery. We do seem to have RAM, I'm not sure if we'll get a hard drive, we don't usually get hard drives in these. But let's just take it out to make sure. Uh, this one doesn't seem to be entirely drenched, so I think we're gonna, we do have a hard drive. Okay, let's uh, take that out because I don't want that booting up into someone else's system. I'm just going to instantly nuke that. So we'll have uh, 320 gig, say to 3 gigs, a decent drive, Hitachi. So, the most useful thing we're going to get out of these drives uh, is uh, we're going to know how for how long these PCs have been running, how many hours they've got. Uh, so, since they have drives, I'm going to bet that everything else is still in there. And uh, let's just fire these up. Uh, I think, as a quick Google search on these, I think these are like first gen i series processors. So, they're not going to be. Particularly impressive first gen i3 is hardly anything to write home about. Almost 10 years old at this stage, but it could be a useful, useful side PC if it works. Not really worth putting any amount of effort into though. Let's just uh, get it plugged in, see what it does. It's not on fire. Got the blue LED on the PC. Fan spin and picture. Ha, huh, nice cursor. Okay, let's see what this thing is. There we go. So, Lifebook S7170 Core i3 M370, 4 gigs of RAM. Yeah, this is not a very, very powerful machine. Not at all. It's reasonably mechanically fresh, though. The screen hinge feels fine, the keyboard is uh, 
barely used. Not even a mark on the, well, a slight wear mark on the spacebar, but this thing really has not seen too many hours of use. I'm pleasantly surprised. So, 2011, first entries in the uh, event log, so that's probably from when this thing dates. What was that, January 20th? And uh, uh, if we just assume from this, it's probably made January 20th, sold December 13th. That's not too bad. Well, it is kind of not a very impressive PC at all. But this could be serviceable. Definitely serviceable. And there we have it on Passmark. So, uh, 2018.917 single threaded. So this is roughly comparable to an uh, Core 2 Duo E8400, something of that order. So, really not a performance monster, this thing, but uh, it could be, I mean, this thing probably has decent integrated graphics. I think it can do YouTube, all that kind of stuff, just fine, uh, if you want to. And since these machines are in such a decent mechanical nick, hey, I'm not complaining. Oh, wow, look at this. This is an amazing feature I've never seen on any other notebook. This is a hatch, which you pop out, and it came easier the last time. But that opens up a hole so you can clean out the heat sink. You can just put your vacuum cleaner in there it's going to suck air through the heatsink backwards. You can clean it out at home. No disassembly required. That is amazing. This is the kind of stuff I love seeing in Fujitsu notebooks because they always have these weird quirky features. We also have like, this is a Fujitsu staple. This is like soft foamy material just to make it a bit more comfortable. The older machines used to almost have the entire bottom coated with this stuff and it doesn't even get all that nasty. So yeah. Why has no one else done this? This is amazing. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. And I can't get it back. Damn it. Thumbs up for Jitsu. Let's just pop out of the underside while we're at it and have a bit of a look. Make sure nothing's horribly wrong in here. Oh, it looks pretty fresh. So this one's had some uh, liquid intrusion. You can see here. On the case, it's been kind of seeping in. That's probably from when it was lying outside in the rain in the trash, as so many of these things are. But uh, at a cursory glance, nothing seems to be obviously screw with the main board, no big corrosion marks around the battery connectors. That's a big thing to look for. It looks just fine. Very nice inside of this thing as well. I, I, I generally love Fujitsu Siemens. Uh, no, because they tend to be quite plastic and horrible, uh, horrible but uh, layout-wise, they tend to be very good. You've got very easy access to everything, one hatch, and there's even a special hatch just to get to the RAM, and you can change out anything if you want to. You've got the wireless card, you have the uh, wireless WAN card there, RAM, CPU, CPU fan, everything's so easy to access. It's a bit of a bother to get the motherboard out, sure, but... Uh, from generally, you don't need to get them of board aid and these aren't. I don't think I've ever seen a Fujitsu Siemens which has suffered a bad motherboard, save for ones which have been just mechanically thrashed to bits. Uh, one I even had uh, serviced, which uh, had had someone take an iron bar, just jam it through the top of the screen, right through the panel, uh, which is stopped just barely short of a keyboard, and it survived. Despite the keyboard being almost mashed, the motherboard made it just fine. And mechanically it made it just fine as well. Just shoved a new panel in there and everything was peach. So yeah, I think this thing's just going to need a blowjob. And then we're going to be good to go. So let's check the its brother out. See if it's just as nice. And, uh, and I guess we're, we're pretty much done here. So here's number two. Well, let's open her up. See? That's pretty much just as fresh as the other one, I'd say. A bit of food on the anti key. No real wear on the space bar. No real wear on the mouse buttons either, nor the touchpad. So, these have definitely been living a, uh, an office life with external 
uh, input devices, which is very good for the mechanical sturdiness, obviously. Uh, I'm a bit bothered I didn't get the batteries with them. They've probably been recycled properly. So that's a bit of a shame because they'd probably been reasonably serviceable. Nick, I don't think they'd seen mini cycles at all. They'd probably be at like 50% capacity or something. Perhaps I'll have to go back and I'll look for them. But let's just plug this guy in as well. Let's see if there's going to be smoke coming out. Or if it's alive as well. It, this one also has a hard drive, you can hear it. So let's just not allow it to boot. Let's just go straight into the BIOS and see. And we've got the same hardware, same everything. So I bet these are just, well these obviously come from the same place. They've been sold at the same time. What's the event logs say? Post memory resized in 2011. So, yeah, nothing special at all. Hard drive is detected. Yeah, this can just work fine. There's going to be nothing wrong with this, I bet. Sweet. I just need to figure out how to get a couple of batteries for these, and they'll be decent little spare machines. Now, something which actually is impressive is the AC adapters which shipped with these because uh, data 2007 so they're probably the right adapters, uh, but these are rated. And what's it say? 19 volts, 5.27 amps. So these are just super heavy duty adapters. I would expect to get a 65 watt adap adapter with one of these. And what's it? 5.3 times 19. This is going to be like a 120 watt adapter or something of a sort. Just ridiculous amounts of power. And that's a good thing, of course, because the bigger the adapter, the less hard it has to work to. Uh, supply the PC, the longer it's going to live, the cooler is going to run, and everything's just fine. So, again, another lovely thing about Fujitsu Siemens. They've entirely overspecced the AC adapters for these things, just so they've built a very nice looking PC. Well, not very nice looking, because these things are ugly as sin, uh, but very well, uh, shall we say, designed PC, since they have survived the tooth of time. Now they do look a bit nasty, so let's bring out the Ajax, Ajax, Ajax. Give this guy a bit of a wipe down. I bet it's gonna look like new. As far as the input devices go though, I don't think anyone's gonna blame me for giving them a quick death. Ugh. Yuck. But never mind those crappy input devices, because we've saved these PCs, which, uh, while they are a bit old and certainly have more than their fair share of numbers behind them, if we look at the smart data out of the drives, geez, 32,000 times. These guys have almost never been turned off. Uh, they're physically fresh and certainly in serviceable condition. You would not be able to tell these guys are as old as they really are. So, with that, I'm just gonna thank you for watching. Cheerio.